Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel, and today's topic is rationality. We're in this unit on expected utility theory, and we know that we require four axioms for expected utility theory to apply. They are completeness, transitivity, independence over lotteries, and continuity. We've covered the first two of these, completeness and transitivity, and what I'm going to be talking about in this lecture is what completeness and transitivity combined by us, whether or not an individual's preferences follow independence over lotteries and continuity. So we're ignoring independence over lotteries and continuity, which is convenient because we haven't learned about them anyway, and we're talking about what completeness and transitivity combined and alone, just those two things together and nothing else, buys us. And more specifically, as you might imagine, it buys us rationality, the subject of this lecture. So rationality, or what sometimes people will refer to as rationality of preferences, means having a preference ordering that is complete and transitive. This is how we define rationality in a game theoretical sense. If you have a preference ordering, you yourself sitting at home, have a preference ordering for some pair or some large set of outcomes, and that ordering is complete and transitive, then you are a rational human being in the way we as game theorists define rationality. Full stop. I don't need to know anything else other than whether your preference ordering is complete and transitive. If it's both complete and transitive, you are rational. If you are not having a preference ordering that is complete and transitive, maybe it's transitive but not complete, or maybe it is complete but not transitive, then you are not rational. That's it. That's all it is. Notice here, in this definition, we have nothing about sensibility. When we think about the word rationality, when we're using it in everyday English language, we might think that sensibility and rationality are synonymous. But this is not the case in the game theoretical sense. Rationality is simply defined by that first bullet point, and that first bullet point says absolutely nothing about sensibility. So as an example of this, We've seen outcomes like this before, winning a million dollars, winning zero dollars, and dying a painful death. We see that this individual has a complete preference ordering because there are arrows going from every single one of these outcomes to every other outcome out there. And you can verify this on your own by pausing the video if you'd like, but this individual also has transitive preferences. And that alone tells us that this individual is rational. You might note that the individual prefers dying a painful death to winning a million dollars, and that's pretty strange. I certainly wouldn't want to die a painful death. I would much rather have a million dollars. But that has nothing to do, once again, with rationality. This individual's preferences are rational, even if they're not sensible. That being said, completeness and transitivity also buys us probably something that's actually more important than just being able to say the word rationality. It buys us a much simpler way of representing an individual's preferences. It's fairly easy to draw out these maps when we have only three outcomes, but lots of games have a lot more outcomes than just three. Right? Games with only three outcomes are kind of boring compared to games with much larger sets of outcomes. And when you have larger sets of outcomes, for example, here's a situation where we have six different outcomes, it becomes very difficult to draw the preference orderings using arrows. This took me quite a bit of time to draw this preference ordering and to make sure that it was both complete and transitive. And just looking at this, you can't easily tell what of these outcomes, which of these outcomes is this individual's most preferred outcome. You can't tell me what this individual's least preferred outcome is very easily by looking at this preference mapping. But having rational preferences, having preferences that are both complete and transitive, allows us to represent this in a much simpler way. A preference ordering, or simply a list. This is a preference ordering or a list that represents and reflects perfectly that slide previously with all of those arrows. This individual most prefers an autographed copy of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook, the next favorite outcome for this individual is winning a million dollars, after that is winning zero dollars, after that is dying a painful death, after that is a pound of Brussels sprouts, and after that is a pretentious seven dollar cupcake. 
If an individual has rational preferences, all they would actually need to do is submit us a list with the top outcome at the top of the list, the worst outcome at the bottom of the list, and everything else going in order in between, and we would be able to then draw that mapping if we really wanted to, although there actually is no real reason to if we have the list already. So these preference orderings are very convenient for us, and simply having rational preferences allows us to have preference orderings like this. Preference orderings can come in two different types. You might hear about strict orderings and you might hear about weak orderings. In a strict ordering, we have no indifference, and in a weak ordering, we have indifference. The reason that we have strict versus weak, and you can think about this in a numerical sense, if we're assigning utilities to an individual and that individual has no indifference among his preferences, that means all of those numbers are going to be different from one another because an outcome is going to be preferred or less preferred as compared to a different outcome. And so we're going to be comparing those utilities with less than or equal signs without having an inequality with a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to sign. When we have no greater than or equal to or no less than or equal to, we refer to that as being a strict ordering. And when we have that sort of indifference possible, where we have an less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, well, that's a little bit weaker than having a strict ordering, right? Strictly dominated strategies versus weakly dominated strategies. See where these words are coming from? So if you have a preference ordering that has indifference, for example, like this one, this would be a weak ordering because this individual is indifferent between winning, no, uh, winning zero dollars, no money at all, and dying a painful death. So it doesn't actually matter whether an individual has strict preferences or a strict ordering or a weak ordering. Either one of those, as we've talked about before, is fine. It's perfectly fine for an individual to have indifference and still be A, rational, and still B, be able to represent uh, his preferences with an expected utility function. So that takes care of the groundwork for rationality, but I want to end you on a bit of a teaser. Since complete and transitive preferences aren't really asking for much, talking about the rationality of an individual, that really doesn't ask for very much either. But what we're going to see in the next lecture, I'm going to leave you with this, is that it's not so easy to guarantee group preferences that are rational. And we're going to see why that's the case in the next lecture. And it's a little bit weird, and you might not expect it going into the next lecture. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you then. Take care.